We're working on problem five of the practice exam. You're designing a space game, yay, space games, in which a single player explores a set of star systems in the universe. Some pairs of star systems are connected by wormholes, others are not. Sounds like a graph to me. Uh, a wormhole can only be traveled in a single direction. Sounds like a directed graph. The player can complete a valuable quest at each star system. Uh, sounds like a directed graph with weights on the nodes, because the star systems are nodes, so it's not exactly a weighted graph in the usual sense. Because the player is a fugitive, closely followed by the evil empirical forces, they can never revisit a star system once they leave it. You've written an algorithm to generate an attractive universe, which is a collection of star systems and wormhole connections, but you're stuck on how to ensure that the universe allows for a large enough score for the player. In particular, you want to solve the space quest problem, SQ. Given a list of the star systems, a list of the wormhole connections, by the way, list of the star systems and list, list of the wormhole connections, that's just a graph, right? That's a list of the vertices and a list of the edges. A starting star system for the player, an integer value for each star system's quest, so these are the weights of the nodes, and a minimum quest result, k, so that's a threshold that sounds very decision problem-y. Uh, is there a path through the universe starting at the start system with total value of quests at each system of at least k? Is there a path through the universe visiting a bunch of star systems so that the total value of the quests along that path is at least k? Uh, so here's an instance of SQ, it says, down below. And I'm going to go ahead and dive into problem one, because problem one is all about understanding the problem, and we usually do our understanding the problem in our intro. Um, circles are star systems. Uh, each system's integer quest value is inside its circles. Arrows are wormholes, which can only be traveled in the direction of the arrow, and the shaded system is the start system. The solution to this problem is yes, when k is equal to 5, and we're supposed to circle or shade the wormhole arrows followed to yield a path that respects the problem's constraints. So let's go ahead and shade them since I've got this handy dandy highlighter. Uh, we're going to have to start at the start system. That is built into the problem. And the problem says we're supposed to travel through star systems and accumulate a total of at least five points of quest value, right? Um, so, uh, boy, actually, there's, there's a lot of ways to do this, right? So let me give an example of a way not to do this, a way that will not work. Uh, we can't do it by going to here and stopping. That's not enough. It doesn't give us enough value. But we actually can do it by going to here and stopping. Note, by the way, we're not allowed to then follow this arrow and gain another point of quest value because we're never allowed to revisit any star system that we've been to. Ooh, let's see, it said that uh, up here. Because they are a fugitive, closely followed, they can never revisit a star system once they leave it. Okay, so that is an example, but you might also be curious how to solve the optimization version of this problem. Um, so have we solved the optimization version of this problem? And the answer is no, we haven't. The, the highest value we can achieve would actually be here. I'll just, I'll draw this in, in red. We could actually go down here and then down here and we would achieve six points of value. But we were only asked, can we achieve at least five? Which, which actually makes a lot of sense for a game. You want to make sure that you know they can get enough points to score gold or whatever. All right, that completes problem one. Um, let's go ahead and solve problem two as well, because that's also an understanding the problem kind of uh, question. So we'll just drop down here and problem three. Okay, give a trivial instance of SQ and its solution. Uh, what's a trivial instance of SQ? Uh, you know, the first thing you should think is, oh, I'll have the graph be empty. Uh, but remember, you have to have a star system, so there's got to be a, a, a start star system, that is. So there's got to be a shaded node. Uh, can the empty graph have a shaded node? And the answer is no, the empty graph cannot have a shaded node. So let's go ahead and have a shaded node. Here's my shaded node. Doo -doo. Leave space for me to say its, its weight is, I don't know, one. Okay, and that's it. That's my whole universe. I also need a k, and uh, it doesn't really matter. It's trivial regardless of what I make k, but let's make k equal to 2, and then the answer will be no. If we make k equal to 1, the answer is yes. If we make k equal to 0, the answer is yes, etc., etc. Uh, now, let's give a small instance of sq and its solution. 
Okay. So, I mean, you could actually argue about whether this is trivial or not, right? Because you do actually have to compare k against the value of the start system. So I guess one thing that this tells you is when you're busy solving this problem, remember that you're always going to include the value of the start system. Okay, now give a small instance of SQ and its solution. Sure, here's a, a small instance. Let's, let's at least put a choice into this instance too. So we'll have two over here and we'll have three over here and the right direction to go will be towards the three. So we'll make K equal to four so that the answer is yes, but you're forced to actually explore a little to discover that the answer is yes, because you don't get enough out of just the start star system, which is one and the right hand star system, which has a quest value two to get the quest value sought.